Hello and welcome to a Wednesday workshop. Um, what we're going to cover today is we are going to cover selecting bamboo for your bicycle build. So whether you're at a workshop or at home, it's quite important to pick the right bamboo for your build. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to run through is I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about why bamboo, why it's good for a bike. So anyone that doesn't know or hasn't ridden a bamboo bicycle before, they can kind of understand a bit more about why bamboo is great on a bike. So I'm just going to summarize very quickly. We've got a really high strength. So if you look at the what's known as the Young's modulus, so the force behind the bamboo, it's got really good tensile compression strength. So it makes it ideal for a bicycle. So the strength is really good. The next thing really is that it's a natural vibration dampener. And so in a very simple terms, if you knock on a steel cabinet, you hear all sorts of noise. And if that same cabinet was made in wood or bamboo, the, the sound would be a lot duller. And that's because it's a natural vibration dampener with wood and bamboo. So that when you're going along the road and there's all sorts of bumps and lumps and however micro or large they are, they all go through your body and what bamboo will do is it will naturally absorb all those all that road noise and you'll have a really really smooth ride so that's one of the really good reason to use bamboo the other reason really for us is that it's customizable so if you were building with a carbon frame or steel frame you've got huge costs involved and therefore with bamboo it's something that an individual of all skill levels can pick up and build with and create their own bicycle. So it's really, really accessible. So that's why I would build using bamboo. So I'm gonna run through today how you pick the front triangle. So that's these front bits here. How you pick the rear triangle. I'm gonna just try and tell you what to look out for and what to think about while you build your bike. My next step, if you're just joining me at home and you've finished your day at work, We've got bamboo here, got my bamboo mug, I've got a beer courtesy of, um, this one's a brew dog, um, and I'm just going to pop that into my bamboo cup, okay, and this just shows other uses of bamboo, okay. So if you're at home and you're joining us, please tuck into a beer and sit back and relax and I'll try and explain how you select your bamboo for a bicycle. So thanks for tuning in, everyone that's tuning in. And I will carry on. Okay, so the first things to really think about is when you're riding a bicycle, what forces are you putting on the bicycle? So if you're pedaling, if you're going a bump in the road, all those things, how is that going to affect the performance of the bicycle? So if you look at a frame as a whole, you've got the bottom bracket here, so that's where all your pedaling's going on. And then obviously you've got a fork here, which acts as a big cantilever. So you get a lot of load coming into this tube here, which is known as the down tube. So the first thing to try and pick when you're doing your bicycle is to try and pick a down tube. The best thing to try and do is what you want from a down tube is you want really good rigidity and you want it to be able to take all the high load that's running through it. So it's one of the highest load areas on the bicycle. So I would always personally try and pick a large diameter piece. And the benefit of that is if you pick a large diameter, so I'll just show you guys an example. That's one size. And we've got a much smaller size here. If you pick a larger diameter, you're not, what you're going to get is really, really good stiffness within the frame. Okay. And it's going to mean that you won't need to do as much joining material. So the weight of the frame will also decline as well. So the first thing I would do is try and pick a larger diameter. The other thing to try and do is another example here. If you look at these two pieces, you'll notice what's known as the nodes here. There's a lot more in this piece and less in this piece. And that means that this piece is from higher up in the, in the column, as it's known, and this piece is lower. And what we want is we want to get a piece that's higher up so that when it's naturally moved in the wind or any moments that it's moved, it's going to be more resistant to that. So we want this style of tube where we've got a wider node structure. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So we're looking for a large diameter 
and we're looking for a no, low node structure. So that's your down tube. Okay. If you are picking your seat tube, which is this piece here, firstly, you want to make sure that it fits within your frame. And the other thing to think about is what you want to fit to your frame. If you're going to fit a front derailleur or any other bottle attachments and so on, you want to check the diameter of this tube and make sure that it doesn't exceed what manufacturers recommend. And that is normally 34.9 millimeters. So you don't want the seat tube to exceed that if you're going to fit a front derailleur. If you're not, and I would always, I, I recommend a one by system, I think they're great, then you can get away with almost any size you want for the seat tube. So that's one of your considerations. Okay, so if you're just joining, I'm talking about frame building and how to build and select bamboo. So we've just talked about seat tubes. I've talked about diameters, front derailleurs. That's a front derailleur for those of you that don't know, and that's going to fit on here. So you don't want to exceed 35 millimeters. Okay. If you're picking your top tube, you can imagine here with the top tube, it's a lower load than the down tube. We're not peddling. We haven't got our fork here. So we can get away with a smaller diameter tube. So I would recommend a smaller diameter. So that's our top tube. That was our down tube. So you can see a difference in diameter, okay? And what that will give you is it will give you a more comfortable ride because you want a little bit of movement around the seat tube so you've got better comfort. And also just aesthetically, if you want a certain shape here, it kind of aligns with the traditional bike frame. So you want a thinner top tube and you want the wide node spacing as well, okay? So just to summarize, guys, I've just gone through front triangle. You want a large down tube, smaller top tube because it's lower force. And with the seat tube, you just want to be really careful of the diameter to make sure that if you're fitting a front derailleur or bottle cages, you can make them fit. Okay, that's a quick summary of what to pick. The next step, guys, is to pick your rear triangle. Okay, and the rear triangle, for those of you that aren't familiar, is your seat stays, which are these ones here, and your, and your chain stays, which are the ones down there. With these, the key consideration that you need to think about is obviously the bamboo that you pick needs to be robust, sturdy, and so on. But you need to think about components. And I always say to people, components first, components first, components first. Try and think about what size wheels you want to fit, what size tire clearance you want to fit. Because when you select, for example, your chain stays, I've got two pieces here that we could pick, okay? We've got a larger diameter and a thinner diameter. If, for example, I went for the larger diameter, my tire clearance will go down considerably, okay? And it will mean that when I go to ride the frame, I won't be able to fit a certain size of tire. So I'd always recommend going for a smaller chain stay here rather than a really large diameter. So that's one consideration. And then we know that there's a lot of force around here. We know that when you pedal, we've got force coming around here and then it's shooting back through the chain stays. So with that, with the chain stays, you want to go for thicker walled, weightier bamboo, and you don't want to exceed 20, 25 mil maximum, okay? So you don't want to go too wide there. So that's one thing to think about when you're picking your chain stays. So this is a good example of a good size chain stay. With the seat stays here, you obviously want a little bit move, more movement around the saddle so that you've got more comfort. And you also, because this is a longer triangle, you've got a lot more room to fit a tire. This is a shorter triangle here. So you can get away with a bit more with a seat stay. So for example, we've had people put multiple seat stays in. So you can do that if you really want to. I personally would recommend going for a smaller diameter than the chain stay. So I'll give you an example here. So if that's my chain stay, I'd probably go slightly thinner on the seat stay. And for me, it's aesthetically looks a lot nicer. And B, it will give you a bit more flexibility around the seat where you want that comfort, okay? So that's considerations for your rear triangle. So thank you for joining our Wednesday workshop. If you're just joining, I've just been talking about tubing selection, how to pick your bamboo if you're building a frame from scratch, and what are some of the considerations? And this is a very, very light 
light workshop. So I'm quickly running through some things to think about. And then obviously, if you guys are interested, get in touch and ask us more questions and feel free to ask me any questions during this session and I will answer them at the end. I'm just running through a few things to think about and to check when you're building a bamboo frame, just so that you get a little bit more knowledge so that when you come to plan your build, you can understand a bit more about what you need to achieve and what you want to achieve. Okay, so just to summarize, we talked about a large down tube. We talked about a seat tube that has capacity to fit a front derailleur. So you don't want to exceed 35 millimeters. And we talked about a narrower top tube to give some movement around the seat. The final thing I talked about was the rear triangle, which is the most complex part of the build, just to, just to put that out there. So be careful when you're building a frame. Most of the mistakes will happen around here. So that's where you want to think about carefully what you're doing. And from that perspective, I would put components first and try and work out what chain stay you want to fit, what seat stay you want to fit, and try and make sure that, that all fits around the tire that you're fitting. Okay, so just to summarize on the rear triangle, we want a chain stay that is burlier than the seat stay, so a larger diameter to reduce all that force around the bottom bracket. And we want a thinner seat stay to give us movement around, around the seat seat. Um, my final thing that I'm going to run through, so I've just talked about how to select your bamboo and so on. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about if you've got raw bamboo at home and you want to harvest it for bamboo for, for making a bicycle, I'm going to give you a couple of things to think about. And if you are looking at growing bamboo, there's a lot of technicalities behind it. So do some more research or get in touch with us. There's a blog on our website, which you can have a look. But some of the considerations you want to do, make sure that the bamboo is mature enough. So five to eight years normally for the bamboo to be mature enough. And the next thing to think about is moisture levels and how to dry the bamboo. And if you are building with raw bamboo, I'd recommend that you get a moisture detector so that over time and while the bamboo dries and so on, you can monitor the moisture levels in the bamboo. That's really important for the longevity of the bamboo. And what you're looking for when the bamboo is stabled at 12% moisture, that's when it's good to use and you want to try and maintain that level. But obviously if you are growing and cutting bamboo, I do a lot of research because there's a lot of protection that you need to implement during that harvesting process. The final thing I'm going to talk about is if you are building a mountain bike at home, most of you might have realized that all the bamboo I'm using is really straight. And that makes it really difficult to increase the diameters for a wider wheel. So what we do here is we create, and this is our example here. So this comes in our home build mountain bike kit. So if you're just joining guys, I'm talking about how to pick bamboo. I've gone through front and rear triangle, and I'm just talking about mountain bikes and engineering bamboo. And what we have is we have a very basic template here, and we make this up with bamboo, and then we join it all together with this flax composite, which is here. And that gives you an engineered mountain bike yoke that allows for much bigger tires. So if you're building, for example, a 29er or you're building a 650, we've gone up to three inch on a, on a 29er. That's our maximum. And if you're building a 650, you can go similar three inch if you want to. And um, that system allows that. So if you're looking at building a mountain bike, have a think of how you set that up. And you can look into mountain bike yokes if you're in, really interested. And um, as I said, we've got ours that is a, a we've calculated using a CAD drawing. Um, the final thing to think about is for those of you that have been following our builds over the last lockdown, we work a lot with laminates and we create our own tubing. And that means that you can enhance the performance. So I was just going to leave a food for thought for everyone at home. If you take raw bamboo, which is this form here, and you cut and rejoin it, you can create loads of different shapes and you can manipulate the performance. You can create openings for batteries. You can create different aerodynamic shapes and you can also manipulate tire clearances and so on. So 
we've got some split bamboo here and you can kind of see the different profiles and that's something that we do a lot of work with so if you're interested in split bamboo and you want to create a more mechanically minded tube i suppose then get in touch and we can talk to you more about our laminate bamboo but thank you ever so much for tuning into this workshop wednesdays um i'm going to run through um the, the questions so i'm just going to have a look you're going to get my ugly face uh so eric has asked what type of bamboo do you use so there's loads and loads of species of bamboo out there there's about 1500 so it can get really really confusing we use a moso bamboo which is used a lot in um construction uses so it's really applicable for bamboo and it's got a really good weight to strength ratio so we use a moso and the other bamboo we use is a tonkin bamboo which has a really straight profile um so it's ideal for more you know straight builds so it's a perfect setup for that uh any other questions okay great Thank you ever so much for tuning into this workshop Wednesday. This is our sixth one. So if you want to see any others, tune into our Facebook and tune into our Instagram live. Thank you ever so much. Bye for now.